Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our webinar, the first webinar of the summer season. And we are very grateful to have once again, Joe Dale, back by popular demand. Many of you, many of you will know Joe and his, uh, his very interesting and meaningful presentations on using online uh, tools and technologies and approaches. Uh, today, Joe's going to talk to us about retrieval and assessment. And Joe, take it away. Thanks so much, Tony. Um, so again, officially, I'd like to thank the British Council, uh, uh, Qatar Foundation International as well for this, um, this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Um, this is a, a couple of times I've done sessions for um, the British Council and Qatar Foundation International, and it's a, it's a real privilege to have that opportunity. So this session uh, has got lots and lots of new ideas in it. Um, and I would really encourage you to ask me questions in the chat related to um, what I'm talking about. If there's anything that's not clear, just ask me and I'll try my best to, to answer your questions there. And then um, I've got my two screens here as per normal. And so I'll be able to have um, the questions coming up. It's really helpful for me if you put a queue in front of the question. Um, uh, oh, I can see Sarah's got a, an echo. Um, I don't have an echo at all myself, Sarah. So maybe have, maybe you, have you got the session on twice on two different separate devices, if that's the case, or if you try wearing headphones, if you're not wearing headphones already, that should sort that out. Um, okay, so if I give you a little bit of background about myself, uh, for those people that haven't seen me before, I'm a former languages teacher. I taught um, French for 13 years. Um, secondary school level for three years and then 10 years at middle school level. For the last 10 years or so, I've been an, in, uh, an international, international, independent, well, international, in, international independent languages consultant, uh, and I normally travel around the world running training on the use of technology and languages. Um, the last big international trip I did was um, back in March of 2020 when I had the opportunity to go to um, Algeria for um, a British Council project I was involved in at the time, which was amazing. And essentially, I've been on the Isle of Wight ever since. My Twitter handle is there on the on the page um, at Joe Dale. I recently uh, surpassed thirty one thousand followers, which is a little bit crazy if you think about it. But I have been on on Twitter for for thirteen years, and um, I'm very yeah, very proud of that fact. Um, and if there's anything that you wanted me to say retweet for you, or you wanted to ask me a question uh, after the uh, after the session, feel free to do so. Um, delighted, Sarah, that it's working for you now. That's great. Um, nothing worse than having an echo when you're talking, or uh, when you're listening, I mean. And my email address is joedell at talk21.com as well. So if you want to email me after today, feel free to do so. You're very, very welcome. Um, and I'm not just saying that, it's a genuine offer. I really don't mind at all. Uh, teachers are contacting me on a daily basis at the moment, um, asking me about different uh, ways of uh, using different web tools and apps for remote or hybrid teaching. So this session is looking at quizzing tools and retrieval practice, and let's make a start. Okay, right. So one of the main names or the main name, I would say, in relation to retrieval practice at the moment um, around the world is Kate Jones. Kate is from uh, Wales originally. Uh, she's currently working in um, Abu Dhabi at uh, the British School of al Barat, but my understanding is she's thinking of coming back to the UK uh, based on a tweet I saw recently. Kate has written a number of books on retrieval practice. Um, if you just search for them on uh, Amazon, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm not paid to say this, I'm just letting you know uh, if you haven't heard of Kate already, you can see I've got the link there at the bottom for um, Kate's book. She's written a number of books, three of which are around retrieval practice. She also has a podcast as well. Um, which is called Love to Teach, um, which I'm a fan of. Um, and she's she's really like the go-to person, I think, for retrieval practice ideas. So if you haven't heard of retrieval practice before, uh, essentially the idea is um, uh, trying to use your your uh, long-term memory uh, to, sorry, your short-term memory to remember, uh, retrieve ideas that you've covered recently so it will then go into your long-term memory. So for example, you could do a quiz at the start of a lesson which is based on the work that you did the previous lesson or the week before or the two weeks before, a month before, two months before, six months before. And by doing that, by constantly revisiting a uh, language that you'd studied, the idea is it will then go into your long-term memory. And there's been a lot of research about this, uh, uh, which obviously Kate is, is referring to in her books. And lots of people think that retrieval practice is a really good idea, particularly in languages 
as a way of retaining information and to uh, uh, to allow it to go into the long term memory, which is why I thought it would be a good idea to talk about that from the research point of view and uh, follow up links and references that you can have a look at. But also um, from the practical, uh, these are different tools which allow you to promote retrieval practice in particular. So I thought this tweet from Kate was particularly interesting uh, around uh, retrieval practice with technology checklist. Uh, as you can see, the first one, low stakes, does the online tool provide opportunities for low stakes quizzing or retrieval? So lots of teachers, what they uh, like to do, they like to do activities using say Quizlet for say 10 minutes, um, a lesson with a particular class. So low stakes testing, in other words, it's not like an exam or what have you, it's just um, having a quiz or having, having a quick uh, a quick test and uh, practicing retrieval practice based on the vocabulary that you've been doing recently. And um, different people have found that that's been very useful for retaining information if it's done regularly. Um, so I think that's exactly right, um, doing lots of low stakes testing. Workload friendly as well. We always want to have tools which um, are low on effort but high on impact. Um, so again, uh, I think lots of technology nowadays, well, that's, exactly, that's exactly the attraction of it, the fact that um, there's maybe no preparation at all required, some of which I'm going to show you today, or very little, uh, or you can create one uh, set of activities um, and it will, you can then import um, that vocabulary set into another tool, or maybe you can put in one set of items and it will then generate lots of different activities from that one set of items. So lots of different ideas um, that you can use to make it um, workload friendly for sure. And then user friendly is the online tool user friendly and easy to navigate for both the teacher and the student. Again, I think that lots of tools are being adapted constantly based on um, the uh, feedback from the, um, from the users and uh, companies are responding really, really well, I think, to uh, improving uh, their, their technologies. Uh, again, I'm going to be talking about some examples of that um, a bit later on in the session. So I think that's a nice uh, checklist to start off with when we're thinking about the appropriacy of some tools for uh, retrieval practice. Okay. So if you want, if you'd like to know more about um, Kate in particular and around retrieval practice and her sort of philosophy and her views, then uh, she's appeared on a number of, uh, of podcasts. In fact, she does, my understanding is she does um, a, Saturday, a Friday morning radio show as well, a breakfast show, which I've not listened to yet, but I have listened to this um, episode of the Becoming Educated podcast, which is run by Darren Leslie, who's up in Scotland. Um, uh, and uh, if you would like to sort of hear around Kate's ideas for about an hour or so, as you can see on the screen there, uh, she's, she's um, currently working at BSAC, the British School of Alcubarat, um, but she's originally from North Wales, and we are in Wrexham. So um, again, I'd encourage you to have a listen to that. I've actually met um, Kate face to face when I was um, keynoting an event in, uh, would have been November 2019 at uh, BSAC, um, uh, the first languages conference that has ever taken place in the Middle East. And I was one of the keynotes and I was able to have um, a, a lovely meal with the other speakers in the evening. Um, uh, and that was, that was fantastic, a real privilege to meet Kate there. Okay, so this is a, um, a document which um, Celeste Robillard has put together. She's MFLCE uh, on Twitter. I'll just put her name in the chat for you if you're interested in, in connecting with her. So she is a languages teacher um, in her first year of, uh, of teaching, and she has put together a, uh, a pack around different practical ideas for promoting retrieval practice in the languages classroom, which you can download for free uh, from the link uh, bottom left there. So if you're looking for sort of practical ideas around retrieval practice, there were lots of ideas going around on Twitter. For example, the idea of five a day, whereby um, you have a, a grid um, with um, different items on it. And the idea is that you have to uh, remember five different items from the, um, from the previous lesson. So the, the, you'll, anyway, if you do a search of five a day, MFL Twitter RT, you'll, you'll find lots of examples, but that's certainly one of the examples that Celeste has shared with you. Okay, um, if you want to know more about a sort of a cross-curricular approach to retrieval practice, then this is a, a Twitter um, chat which took place recently uh, for UK Ed Chat. If you don't know about UK Ed Chat, uh, it's, a, it's a hashtag um, which relates to uh, a, essentially a group of uh, teachers who are really in, interesting in, interested in talking about all educational 
um, policies and um, uh, developments at the moment, and, and that's been going for many, many years. Um, you can see that you just follow the UK Ed Chat um, Twitter handle, uh, sorry, uh, hashtag, and it's normally it normally takes place on a Thursday between sort of eight and nine o'clock. Um, and uh, this is an example of, of Kate, whose Twitter handle used to be eighty seven history. She's now changed it, and her, her new um, handle is on the previous slide. But um, she took part in this particular uh, Twitter conversation. And you've got links to the whole chat there. So she's, you've got Kate hosting, but you've also got lots of other people talking about how they put to, put together strategies for retrieval practice in the in the classroom. There was also, as well, a UK Ed Chat online conference. Um, I, I watched a couple of them. There were uh, a few language present, uh, presentations, and um, the uh, the videos for those I think are available on the on the website. Uh, certainly if you registered you were able to watch the video so that's something else which you could explore if you were interested okay there this is um an assistant head teacher uh in yorkshire kirsty dixon who has written this blog post around retrieval practice um quoting um people like kate jones as well as uh, Prof professor rob coe who's done lots of uh, presentations uh for the research ed uh session uh, sorry sessions should i say and face-to-face -face events uh, as well and um, if you have a look at that link um, you'll see the whole article and you'll see lots of references to retrieval practice and then the research that you can then follow up. Um, I'm going to be um, sharing Janan not only the recording but also the whole presentation as well on the last slide so don't worry um, you're going to get the whole thing uh, including the recording so uh, you'll be absolutely fine from that point of view. Uh, another blog post um, about retrieval practice and languages this is from James Maxwell who's a, a, a assistant head teacher in Northern Ireland. And uh, he's a big, big fan of Kate. Uh, in fact, in Kate's second book, there's a case study of the work um, that his uh, school were doing around retrieval practice. And um, that's lovely to see. And I know that um, Kate has done an um, a inset webinar for um, the school as well. I think it's Carrick Fergus, if I remember correct, Carrick Fergus um, High School uh, in uh, Northern Ireland. But um, again, if you read that blog post, you'll be able to see um, the, the reflections from uh, James around the power of retrieval practice in languages. And as you can see as well, there are other people who have been uh, mentioned in that blog post, people like David Didow and um, Pets McRae and, and other people who are also very much interested in this sort of evidence-based, research-based approach. So if you're a fan of that, then... Um, um, those are some good links for you to have a look at. Okay, so now, so that's sort of like the context. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some different tools which lend themselves well to retrieval practice. Okay, so sort of uh, formative assessment tools, quizzing tools, um, and so on and so forth. So first of all, we're going to have a look at a tool, um, spiral.ac, which has a number of different activities, but we're going to look in particular at one called quick fire light which requires no preparation and it creates a type of mini whiteboard uh, activity which i'll demonstrate live in a moment this uh, is a tool which i heard about from a teacher miss causa laura causa mfl uh, who is currently based in the middle east but was in southeast asia um, before that and she gave a presentation for uh, the show and tell session at the language show which normally play, takes place in london but was online november last year and um, as part of the show and tell the idea is that everyone gives a, a short presentation and laura taught uh, told us all about spiral which i think a lot of us hadn't heard about before which was really really cool so she's got this little guide here telling you about the sorts of things you can do with it and we'll do a live session in a minute but i just want to show you some other uh, things first so this is a, a video tutorial that Esmeralda Salgado has done uh, and her um, Twitter handle is the following. It's uh, Botones Salgado and she is incredible. Um, she's the head of languages at King's Ely School in Cambridgeshire and she's been prolific during the pandemic with her blog which is mflcraft.blogspot.com and uh, on her YouTube channel, which you can access via the link at the bottom there. 
Um, she's created a number of different sort of how-to guides on different tools which she is finding really useful in the Languages Classroom. And this one is spiral.ac and in particular the Quickfire Lite uh, option. Now, what she really likes about this, and this is why it's good for retrieval practice, is the fact, as you can see on the screen, it says improve. So the idea is that you ask a question um, out loud uh, using the microphone in Zoom or whatever you're using, and then the students will then answer that question by writing the text on the uh, on their individual whiteboard. So each person gets their own individual whiteboard, and then the teacher can then click either correct if um, if what the person has written uh, is deemed as correct, and if people have got the same answer, then all those people with the same answer it will all be um, marked as correct, which is fantastic. But if the teacher clicks on improve, it means that the a student gets the opportunity to edit their answer and to make it better. So from a retrieval practice point of view, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, so I'm not going to play the tutorial for you now because I'm going to do this live with you in a second. So I'm just going to go to the next page and this is what the homepage looks like. Okay, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to click on the link. We're going to go to spiral.ac. I'm going to quickly log in like this. And I'm going to actually log in with my Google account. So interestingly, I tried to click log in uh, the other day and it says invalid email or password whereas when i use google it just worked so <laughs> there we are uh right so i'm in um uh, spiral.ac now and all you can uh, as you can see there it says quick fire light before you would do this what you do is you go to classes and you would click on um add new class or you can import your uh, students and classes from google classroom if that's what you're using i just clicked on add new class and i called my class Joe Dale class um, and then you then I click back on home and I click here launch quick fire light okay so here I then just click on go like this okay and then what I'd like you to do please is to go to uh, in your browser to go to go spiral.ac like this uh, and you're asked to put in a code so you put the code n n p h y so that always stays the same and you then put in your name so feel free to just put in your first name if you'd like to and it uh, takes us in like that and if i just refresh a page then it should, okay, it's saying waiting for students. And then I then, uh, then you tap start on your screen. And as we, there we are, perfect. As a result of that, I'm in here now. So you have to tap start once you've come in. I've actually come in on my, on my iPad. Um, and it says your student devices are locked, but when I'm ready, when everyone has, has joined, I can then click go, and then I'll be able to ask, uh, uh, ask you a question. So at the moment on your screen, what you should have, I don't know how well you can see that. What you should have is it says, pay attention to your teacher to hear the question. Okay. Um, so the code uh, is NNPHY. Can you see top right? It's displayed NNPHY. So NNPHY. I don't know if you can hear that, the sound of my neighbor's motorbike, but he's got this one of these great big sort of Harley Davidson um, uh, motorbikes, things which he just seems to be, he's just, trying the engine out at the moment never mind but hopefully you can't hear that uh so i'll just give you a little bit more time to to join and then i'll click go and we'll go from there oh you just stopped that's good a few okay so i'll just give you another couple of seconds to join in if you'd like to okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to click go Okay, and as you can see, it says you missed some steps, Nadia. What was the, the bit that you missed? So wh what you do is you just go to um, spiral.ac, you create your account, or you can log in with a Google account. You go to class and you create your class. I've already made mine, um, so I just used that one. And then I clicked on the home option. I chose the quick fire light option, which generates the... Uh, the code and then you just go to go spiral.ac and you put the code in and then you're able to there we are i can see someone else has just joined us 
um, which is fantastic. So on my um, uh, on my uh, uh, on here now, you can now uh, start to submit your your answer. Okay, so I could then say, um, could you tell me what you had for breakfast? But could you try to write in Arabic? Because I want to see whether you can write in Arabic. I'm sure you will be able to. Uh, I don't know Arabic, so I'm just going to say I had porridge. But just let me know what you had for breakfast. Um, and if you could write in Arabic, I'll be able to see whether it uh, what uh, I'm hoping is going to happen uh, is working. As you can see here as well, it says reveal answers. So this is really nice. So I can choose whether or not I reveal the answers. Um, so I will do that in a second. But for now, I'm just going to let you all uh, respond. And I'll just give you a second to do that. So you can see from... Uh, uh, from the point of view of everybody all contributing at the same time, it's really nice. A uh, number of you are uh, responding already, which is fantastic. And so we'll go from there in a second. So I can see most of you have replied. So I'm going to click reveal answers. Perfect. So as you can see, you can write in Arabic. That's absolutely brilliant. That's lovely. Um, and so now what I could do if I wanted to is I could click uh, improve on any of these. Ah, OK, you have no Ara Arabic keyboard, but if you had an Arabic keyboard or you're able to write in Arabic, then you would be able to write here. Yeah, that's fantastic. So I'm simply going to click on uh, improve on everyone's one. And I just would like you to tell me what you thought of your breakfast. So this could be a second sentence whereby you give me your opinion about your breakfast okay so as a result of that uh, uh on your screen again you should get the, the box again that you just had and now you're able to add um an opinion and then tap submit okay so you can see how it how it works now the other thing that you can do uh, as you can see there, I've written, I had porridge, it was lovely. So I've, um, I've done that. So that's fantastic. And so by doing, by doing that, you're, you're promoting retrieval practice, you're asking the students to improve on what they've done. Um, and that's fantastic. So hopefully everyone has understood how this can be, how this can be used. Uh, the only comment that people have said around using spiral.ac with, say, a group of 30 is it means that the tiles might move around quite a lot. But uh, as long as you don't feel seasick, then you should be OK from that point of view. Now, the other thing I can do, I could click show names if I wanted to. I don't have to do that. So to protect people's privacy or maybe, you know, um, if someone is feeling a bit shy, you don't have to show people's names at all. Um, but you could if you wanted to. And then the next thing is you would click on ask another question. We would then just start uh, again from scratch and uh, you then, yeah, we then go from there. Uh, if anyone were to write anything inappropriate, I could just click finish quick fire and, uh, and, and stop it. Obviously, you're asked to put in your name, but if someone were to put in a silly name um, and wrote something silly, then you'd have to just finish the quick fire. So there isn't, you can't moderate um, the answers before they go live. But um, with a sensible class, I think this would be a really, really useful um useful tool what do you what do you think let me know in the chat what you think of what you've seen so far is this a new tool to you or have any of you used it before be interesting to know you can see at the bottom as well it says hide answers show names random exit ticket okay and that's lovely okay so hopefully everyone has uh, understood that and see how it, how it works. Don't worry, Janan, that's fine. So uh, let's have a look. So are students able to see the screen, the one we see on Zoom now? So what the students see, as you can see now, you can just see your own answer. So on my screen, I can just see my own answer. But if I'm sharing my screen via Zoom or whichever tool that you're using, then everyone can see everyone else's um, answers. So that's that's why it can be useful for me to say, click on hide answers, so nobody can see anyone's answers or reveal answers so people can see, see the answers. And obviously the show names as well. If I want to click show names, 
I could show who's written what, or I could hide the names for the reasons I've talked about. Uh, I can see uh, Zilani uh, thinks it's very useful, but students who aren't proficient at writing might prove an issue. Yeah, absolutely. But then at the same time, if they, um, uh, when they're producing their writing and you want them to improve what they've written, then you would just click on improve. But of course, if they find writing difficult, then you might want to do some preliminary steps on um, improving their understanding of what it is that they want to write. But uh, in lots of ways, I think this is a very useful tool um, to encourage them to improve what they've written. Or you could say, well, actually, you could name a particular student and say, don't forget about this, this, and this that you've forgotten to do. Um, and they can then improve on it that way. Or uh, without revealing someone's name, you could say, well, the person that's written this sentence, don't forget you need to add this, or could you put in an opinion or whatever it is that you want to do. Can you record? No, you can't record on this app. Um, you, well, you could record the screen. You could use Zoom and record the screen or use another screen recording tool such as um, Screencastify, for example, uh, like this. Let me just uh, write this in the chat. So you could use, say, Screencastify uh, and other such, um, other such tools such as Loom or a new one, which I'm a big fan of, called Screenity, which is um, open source and unlimited. You could record the, the screen that way. You do get some analytics, which I'll talk about in a second. So hopefully everyone's seen how, how it works. And now I can click on finish quick fire like this. And then as you can see, this gives me a few analytics. So I can see that uh, in this particular session, uh, I had 92% of the responses were received. I asked one question. And then if I go further down, I can actually have um, list by question or I can click list by student. So I can see what each individual student did, which is nice as well. Oh, there's also a leave feedback, which is something I've not explored before. So if I click on leave feedback, okay, so here that's a nice an opportunity for you to leave individual feedback as well. That's something I've not tried before. And then for the grades table, okay, you're even, you're even getting this as well, which is really nice, I think, to um, have a look at as well. So there's lots of ways in which you can do this, but I love the way that it's, um, it doesn't require any preparation at all. Now, if I go back to say home here, and I click on this one, quick fire. This essentially is the same type of activity, but the difference is you, you write your questions in here. So you pre-populate the questions rather than just saying them out loud. So that requires some preparation, whereas the quick fire light version doesn't require any preparation at all. And spiral.ac at the moment is completely free. So that's really useful. Okay, if there are no more questions, I will carry on with my presentation and uh, thank you so much everybody in fact let me just log out of here thank you so much everybody for um taking part in that particular demonstration that was awesome okay so let's uh let's carry on right now another tool whiteboard.fi is also really good for retrieval practice i did show this in another session that i did for the british council and the uh, qatar foundation international international but um um obviously not maybe everyone was there so i'm just going to quickly show you again now, I think this is really useful for um, uh, retrieval practice. Uh, so I'm just going to um, just do this live, if that's OK. So I'm going to click on new class like this. I'm going to put in my name like this and click create new class. So this is a really popular tool amongst the language teachers who I know. This has now come up. I'm now going to put the link for you in the chat. And all you have to do is click on it like this. I'm also going to click on the show QR code as well. And I can now scan this with my iPad like this. And then if you wanted to do that as well, you could do that. You could scan it with your, uh, your phone or your um, device. You're then asked to put in your name again, which I've just done and tap on the join whiteboard uh, class. And then on your screen, what you should be able to see now is um, your little board and on that board, you can draw a picture, you can add in an image, uh, you can write text. So now I just want you to draw a picture representing how you feel about remote or hybrid teaching. So I'm going to draw a big heart like this, like that. And that should now appear on the screen in a second. There we are. You can see on my mini whiteboard, um, it's appeared. So similar to spiral.ac, but it allows you to draw um really really nicely there are other there are other tools which also allow you to draw in this way but i thought for say arabic characters it could be um very very useful 
but for now i'm just asking you to draw a picture oh no zelani you don't seem very happy i'm very sorry to see that um so that's lovely so i'll just give you a little bit more time to to draw a picture so of course what i could do is i could uh, i could say for example okay draw me a picture describing what you did last night or your ideal holiday or um how do you say the uh, such such a phrase in the the perfect tense or whatever it might be you know whatever grammar that you wanted to do so a quick way um of promoting retrieval practice um so that the um uh, the content goes into the long-term memory and what a better way of doing that with drawing you can as i said use text and images with this as well but i really like the way you can draw a picture with this as well i absolutely love xyz's uh picture that's fantastic okay so what i'm going to do now is just show you another little idea that you can do so um i can uh click on that sort of thing i'm going to click on the xyz's picture if that's okay so you've now gone much larger like this and i'm going to use screencastify which is a free chrome extension which allows me to record uh the screen and to annotate at the same time so i'm going to click oh i'm going to click record like this oh i need to turn off my video first of all i nearly forgot that so i turn turn off my video and i do that again otherwise it won't work okay so i click record and it should work now here we are Okay, so what I'm going to do now um, is you can see the toolbar bottom left. I'm going to click on the pen tool and I'm going to uh, stick with the color red. And the person that's drawn uh, the lovely face there with uh, who's XYZ, could you carry on drawing, please, uh, while I annotate at the same time? So I think this is a fantastic drawing. If you want to draw, for example, the, the neck and the shoulders, maybe. Um, and as you, as you can see, yeah, so that person has just written. OK, I don't know who it is. So I'm just guessing. But that person has um, written OK, which is lovely. And I can, oh, it's you, uh, Mevludin. That's fantastic. OK, so I can, as you can see, I can draw different things. I could carry on drawing the picture. But what I was thinking was, if you were writing in Arabic um, or using the annotation tool, if there were mistakes there, I could then, as the teacher, I can then annotate over the top and uh, show um, the mistakes that uh, have been done so that the, uh, the, the student could then erase those mistakes or improve on them or see um uh, how they'd made a mistake um uh, on the board and as a result of that you're really promoting retrieval practice so you're, you're giving them immediate feedback there and then straight away so feel free to, to draw something that's fantastic okay so feel free to draw something else that's great i can then underline uh obviously it's not as, as easy to to underline with a mouse but you get the idea that's fantastic okay so i'm now going to click back here in screencastify and click stop Okay, as a result of that, that will now take me to a new web page like this. And I can now unmute myself and you'll be able to hear back what I was just saying. Here we go. Pen tool. Okay, so what I'm going to do now um, is you can see the toolbar bottom left. I'm going to click on the pen tool and I'm going to uh, stick with the color red. And the person that's drawn uh, the lovely face there with uh, who's XYZ, could you carry on drawing, please, uh, while I annotate at the same time? So I think this is a fantastic drawing. If you want to draw, for example, the the neck and the shoulders, maybe. Um, and as you can see, as you can see, yeah. So that person has just written OK. I don't know who it is, so I'm just guessing. But that person has um, written OK, which is lovely. And I can. Oh, it's you, uh, Mevludin. That's fantastic. OK, so I can, as you can see, I can draw different things. I could carry on drawing the picture. But what I was thinking was, if you were writing in Arabic um, or using the annotation tool. If there were mistakes there, I could then, as the teacher, I can then annotate over the top and uh, show um, the mistakes that uh, have been done, so that the uh, the, the student. Okay, could... so you get the idea. I can see in the in the chat, Janan has asked, "How can we submit the drawing?" So when you do the drawing, uh, it will appear automatically, so that everyone else can see it. That's the idea. Um, but uh, if you wanted to record, is, do you mean if you wanted to record the screen, how do you submit the drawing? I'm not exactly. Can you clarify what you mean? Um, certainly what I can do now, having used Screencastify, because I've linked Screencastify with my Google account, I can click copy shareable link here, top right. That will now enable me to uh, share the link uh, in the chat like this. And that means now if you wanted to, you can then watch back that that recording. Uh, also here you see it says download so i can download 
um, the file as an MP4 file, as a video file, as an audio file only, or I can even make an animated GIF, which is quite nice in, uh, in Screencastify. So if I go back to here and I click, uh, oh, before I click close, if I click actions, I could, uh, if I thought that the picture was inappropriate, I could click kick student. Uh, I could erase the whiteboard. I could also uh, save the whiteboard as, as an image. Uh, I can also do other things such as P uh, push teacher whiteboard to students, push teacher whiteboard to student current page and so on and so forth. So that's really, really nice, I think. So I'm just going to click close. And I can see I've got the question, can we use PDF on here? Yes, you can. So what you can, well, what I mean by that is you can export all the pictures as a PDF if that's what you mean. So if I click on here, and I click um, save all whiteboards as PDF, this option. I could also click on clear all student whiteboards if there was you know, lots of people drawing inappropriate things, I could do that as well. I'm gonna click on save all whiteboards as PDF. So I click on that and click save as PDF. Um, right, I don't know Zelani if you can import a PDF, why would you want to do that? I mean, you can import an image, but I'm not sure you can import a PDF. So if I click save like this, there it is, and then I can then upload, uh, I can, sorry, I can open it. And as you can see, I've now got evidence of all the work that people have done. So that's a really powerful way, I think, of uh, conveying meaning through drawing, as well as uh, promoting retrieval practice. Uh, right, I see, I understand what you're trying to say now. I wouldn't use um, whiteboard.fi to mark up a PDF. If that's what you wanted to do, what I would recommend if you're using the Chrome browser is uh, an app called Kami. I think it's Kami app, if I remember correctly. Let's have a look. Yeah, here we are, Kami. So this is a tool which allows you to, to um, display PDFs from your Google account. And it also gives you access to different pen tools. You can also add in text boxes and so on and so forth. That's what I would recommend. And if you wanted to as well, you could record your screen in say Screencastify while, while annotating um a pdf um or either in cami or or just by displaying it in google drive and that would be another thing that you could do you could annotate over the top with a pen so i wouldn't use whiteboard.fi for that i would use one of these other tools but whiteboard.fi is great i think for everyone drawing their own individual responses to um, a prompt from the teacher if that makes sense so great question thank you i think i've answered all the questions so far so janan when you're saying about arabic writing do you mean can you uh when you're writing text, can you write in Arabic? Is that what you mean? Uh, if you want to give it a try, yeah. So let's let, let's try. So if I um, if I ask you to write now, please uh, in Arabic on your screen. Let's see if it works. So to do that, you just tap on the the A tool. So the letter A, and that should then uh, uh, allow you to tap on the screen. And then if you do that, let's see if you can right in Arabic. I think actually we already had um, XYZ, the person who, yeah, this person, Mel Vadunin, has written in, in Arabic, so you can write in Arabic, yeah. So that's your answer, Jalan, you can, which is lovely to see. Okay, phew, lovely stuff. Okay, let me close these windows now, like that, uh, like that, and then here, to finish off with, what you do is you simply click here and you click close room automatically the room is closed after two hours so this is really only designed to be used synchronously um, but it could be students at home as well as students in the classroom could be doing this and uh, there we are so if I click close room the room is now closed and then on your screen um, you should be seeing your teacher closed the room this whiteboard session has ended so that's perfect so really really safe tool to use I think and completely free there are there is a premium version but what I've shown you today is completely free so there we are, that's that one. Now, here's some uh, testimonials from different uh, language teachers. Um, for example, my favorite one here is Ms. Ganzorn uh, from May last year saying, thank you again for whiteboard.fi. It is the highlight of my lockdown. I think my year 10 will be forever grateful to you for it, which is just lovely. Uh, for those people teaching at primary, I think it's a really appropriate tool to use at primary as well. That's great. Um, and as you can see, you've got some other testimonials there from other people as well. So I think um, for Arabic teachers, I think it's a really, really cool tool, which I'd encourage you to have a look at. So this is a tutorial which was created by a, uh, a teacher in Ireland, Valerie David McGonnell. And um, she created this using Genially, which you haven't seen before. It's a, it's a cool presentation tool. 
I'm not going to go through this uh, now because I've just shown you live. But if you click on that, it will go through the different uh, features of whiteboard.fi that you can use as a, as a language teacher, which is just great. Uh, here are some, uh, some blog posts which have been written by language teachers. The first one on the left-hand side uh, was written by Samantha Decker, who's a French teacher from the States. Um, admittedly, this was written back in 2013, but of course you could just replicate the same answers or the same idea, should I say, using whiteboard.fi. And then on the right-hand side, that's uh, Claire Hampson, who's a, a teacher from Yorkshire uh, in uh, Thursk, and uh, she wrote this back in 2012. Uh, as you can see, it's called Mini Whiteboard Frenzy. So again, she shares lots of ideas on how you can use mini whiteboards in the languages classroom. So I think you should find that really, really useful as well. Okay, if you're using Microsoft Teams and, and OneNote, this is a screenshot from uh, one of the Tilt webinars, which I've been uh, organizing since the start of March. So if you haven't heard of those, Tilt stands for Technology and Language Teaching. And um, I've been organizing lots and lots and lots and lots of webinars for the Association for Language Learning um uh, all available for free either on the um, AWL London website or on my YouTube channel and if you want to check them out you can do that really easily um all you have to do is go to my YouTube channel which is Jodel 100 I'll just write this in the chat at the moment uh there we are um and if you go to Jodel 100 you'll find it and if you do a search for uh ALL London webinars then you'll find the link and you can watch all the, the previous um, recordings plus all the notes which um, my friend Helen Myers has put together which has been amazing and uh, we've done over 140 I think it is nearly 150 since March 2020 so it's been a huge amount of work but we both felt you know morally it was the right thing to do and we've had people from literally all over the world presenting so this particular screenshot um, was taken from one of the early webinars that we did uh, from Sandra Actas, who works at Wellington College, and uh, she works in a Microsoft Showcase school, and she's talking here about using OneNote to um, use the collaborative space in, in OneNote, or in particular, Class Notebook. So she's using the collaboration space. She's got a, um, uh, a PDF there of uh, lots of different bits of paper with the names of students on them. And so the idea is that the students would all have access to that. They could all then write their answers as a, as a mini whiteboard on the individual uh, bits of paper that she's created for them so that's another uh, option i've put the youtube clip there so if you were to click on that it would take you to my my channel and then you'd be able to watch um, all the other tutorials which are there as well so let's focus now on some quizzing tools there are lots of um, them available these are some of the most uh, popular ones i would say um feel free to let me know in the chat if there are any ones which are new for you i would imagine that probably tools such as BlueKit, uh, WordWall, and possibly GimKit would be new to you. Obviously, Quizlet and Quizzes have been around for a long time, So, um, and obviously Kahoot as well. But um, I thought I'd make this graphic just showing how um, uh, how uh, language teachers are particularly you know, enjoying using these types of tools in relation to retrieval practice. In fact, Kate Jones, who I've mentioned a few times, she um, regards quizzes as her, as her favorite tool for retrieval practice, which is lovely to see. Okay, let's carry on. Um, I did a, a presentation for the um, AWL Southwest conference uh, a few months ago, and the recording of that is available here. So that replicates some of the content which, um, uh, which I'm covering right now. But again, I thought you'd find it interesting to be able to watch that back in your own time, just sort of compare and contrast. There's quite a few new things in this presentation, but I thought that'd be useful as well for uh, for some other uh, uh, explanations of different quizzing tools. So I can see that Nadia, that um, uh, WordWall and GimKit are new to you. Interesting. So I'm be, going to be talk talking more about those in a second. So again, you've got the link there uh, for you to have a look at. Okay, let's carry on. Um, very, very recently, literally in the last couple of days, Sylvia Basto, who is a head of languages um, in the uh, in the West Midlands, she did a presentation all around retrieval practice, um, which goes into a lot of detail, um, a lot more detail than I've gone in so far today. Uh, and again, I'd really encourage you to have a look at that. It's an hour long, and it's absolutely brilliant. And she uh, she gives lots of advice based on her own practice um, with retrieval practice and what she finds works. Um, uh, and she's uh, Caesar Sylvia Four on Twitter as well. Great person to follow. So she's really, really inspiring. So I'd really encourage you to to check her out as well. 
Yes. Okay. Right. Another tool. Um, oh, before I uh, go for, uh, onward as well, you would have noticed there was this little black box appearing at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and that's for, in fact, let me just go back a second. Let me just play some of this and you'll see what I mean. Here we go. So. Yes. So you should. Right. Okay. Yeah. Can you see at the bottom of the screen? You've got this live yes, captioning show, appearing. Current slides. Like that. Now that's Continue. automatically happening because of the fact. Right. Um, that's also actually happening because of the fact that I have uh, live captions turned on. And I'm just going to show you how to do that. This is just something in Chrome. So all you do is you click on the three dots here. You click on settings. You click advanced. And you click accessibility. You'll then see it says live caption. And then you have to turn this on. So you have to have the latest version of Chrome. You need to update to the latest version. Once you've done that, you can just turn this on. And it means whenever you're playing video or audio in your browser in Chrome, the live captions will appear unless, of course, you turn it off. Now, at the moment, this is only available in English. But knowing Google, I'm sure they'll add new uh, languages um, in the forthcoming months, as they seem to with lots and lots of other uh, tools that they use, which are multilingual. So I think this is a really, really nice new feature. And I just wanted to explain that's what I was doing when I was just showing you that there. So let's go back to this and go on to the next slide. Yes. Like that. Okay. So another tool which um, I'm cr I've come across recently, which is uh, very good for retrieval practice as well, is carousel learning. Now, carousel learning is a sort of a standard uh, multiple choice type of uh, exercise created by um, a teacher called Adam Boxer. Um, and I think a few other people, but I think Adam Box is the main person behind this. And again, again, it's sort of evidence based. Adam is a big fan of um, research um, in um, in education, and uh, he's put together this uh, this particular tool, Carousel Learning. So the main difference between this and a classic, just multiple choice type of activity, is the fact that once the students have submitted their answers, the teacher can give them the, the opportunity to improve and to resubmit. So in other words, if they made a mistake, um, the teacher gives the opportunity to the students to then correct their answer and then resubmit it. So this is based on the idea of retrieval practice, whereby they can have a look at what they've done. They're being told they've made a mistake, but they haven't been told what the mistake is. And as a result of that, they can in improve on it. Now, uh, Jane Bassnett, who, uh, like Esmola Salgado, has been absolutely prolific during the uh, pandemic. Uh, in fact, she was before as well. Uh, as was Esmeralda, but particularly during the um, the pandemic, she's been absolutely fantastic. And her Twitter handle is Bassnet J, and her blog is uh, What Jane Learnt Next dot blogspot dot com. And Jane, who's a big fan of sort of coming across these new tools, decided to make, as you can see, bottom left there, three different. Um, video tutorials or screencasts around carousel learning from the teacher view, the student view and how to upload questions. And then Sarah Noble, who's a, a, also a languages teacher from uh, the UK, she wrote a blog for carousel learning about how she's using retrieval practice in relation to carousel learning in her languages lessons. So again, if you watch those, um, those videos, you'll be able to see how it all works and it might be something that you want to explore yourselves and I'm sure you'll be able to write in Arabic while doing that. Going back to uh, to Kate again, uh, this is a, a tweet she did recently uh, suggesting some top tips for designing multiple choice questions. As you can see uh, coming up with suggestions such as th having three or four options are optimum, keep the language and layout clear and concise. That goes back to this idea of dual coding as well which is also very much flavor of the month at the moment. Uh, collaborate with colleagues on question design, Lovely. Avoid using all or none of the above. Make time for feedback and reflection. That goes back to the previous page, I think, for carousel learning. Include, include I don't know yet to identify gaps. Uh, go beyond factual recall. And then online quizzing tools can support workload. Absolutely. So there we are. That's, um, that's um, also something which I thought was really useful to share with you um, to consider. Because obviously, if you've, if you're in multiple choice, if you've got, say, one obvious answer and then the other three are sort of ridiculous and, and not uh, going to be the answer at all, then it just makes it too easy. So you, it takes time and thought how to make um, answers which look as if they could be plausible, but you're only, you're actually 
searching out for the exact um, correct answer. That's um, that's a really good piece of advice, I think. Right. So I'm not going to go through every single um, tool that you can do for quizzes, but I thought I would highlight GimKit because I know that, again, from an engagement point of view, I think it's um, something which is proving very popular amongst um, children and has been for a while. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, it's very much uh, sort of like based on the Kahoot type model, but it has many, many more, more features. One in particular, the fact that you can sort of earn uh, virtual dollars um, to uh, uh, to uh, improve the number of points that you get so that you can go on longer streaks, as one says. And uh, as a result of that, you can uh, you can beat your classmates or beat the teacher. So it's still basically multiple choice, but in a sort of fun gamified way and the person who created um gimkit is a t uh, is a, a a person called josh from the states who at the time was about 14 i think when he started it and i think now four years later he's 18. so let me just um show you one of the one of the highlights of my year so far which was i took part in this american conference called sculpt which stands for southern central um organization for language teachers i think and uh, you can see the the guy in the top there in the middle that is actually josh from gimkit so we had the opportunity of playing gimkit with josh from gimkit um at the conference which is really really awesome uh, and he introduced us to some new different ideas uh, in particular this is a brand new uh, option within gimkit which allows you to draw so again i thought for uh, arabic this would be really really nice so as you can see what happens is the teacher decides uh, the expression that uh, they want the students to draw in this case um the teacher wants to draw a picture of uh, for popcorn and you can see that everyone then submits their answer and it automatically uh, will then mark the answer for them and then you can see who's got it right and who hasn't which is just absolutely uh, fantastic so the, the children can draw the different pictures and uh and then see who gets it right so that's uh that's uh great so yeah, that was a real, real, real highlight. I must say that was just um, a couple of months ago in March, but it was awesome. Um, this is a, an example of a language teacher from um, Falkirk up in Scotland. Uh, as you can see there, she's, um, I think this is in German. Anyway, she she's written the, um, the different expressions there and then she's getting the students to guess what the answers are. As you can see there, she's saying lots of fun with S1 today, practicing the new food vocabulary using Gimkit. Uh, it's called that draw officially or so draw that it's called draw that officially some drawings easier to guess than others but lots of excellent german learned already there we are so it is for german um but why not do it for arabic i thought again that could be very useful as well for the students to practice uh with their drawings and their guessing so again useful for retrieval practice now this is a brand brand new feature which has literally only come out in the last couple of days i haven't had a chance to explore it myself but it's called smart repetition that's Josh again from uh, what looks like his kitchen um, saying, as you can see, the feature you all requested most is for missed questions to repeat more often. So in other words, if a student has got a question wrong, it will then come up um, more often than the other questions. So that's really, really cool. And using presumably artificial intelligence to work that out. I don't know. Uh, and as you can see, we just released an update that does exactly that. We call it smart repetition and it's awesome. So if I just click on this link here to show you, what it looks like so here it is that's the the, the video I'm not I'm not going to play the video for you now but you'll be able to watch it back in your own time but you can see here uh paula is saying wonderful addition to gimkit uh karen saying you guys slay all day and all the rest of it so that's fantastic um so that's that's the new feature now if i go back here and i go back to this second one the second link you'll see again uh so this is josh uh fine silver uh talking about smart repetition and you've got it down here there we are and as you can see here people giving him lots of lovely feedback which is just absolutely brilliant so there we are um really really cool uh if i click on this link here i think i thought uh there was uh, my friend vincent everett had made a comment let me just click here let's see if it comes up no, nope, can't find it right now. Never mind. But um, my friend Vincent Everett, who's V Everett MFL, he's a big fan of Gimkit, and he was telling me about um, this earlier on today. So that's fantastic. So always nice to reach out to people in your your Twitter network. So again, 
Uh, GimKit's a great one, I think, to have a look at. You can also set um, assignments with GimKit. Um, so like homework assignments, as you can with quizzes and with Kahoot as well. So here's a link to how you can do that. So you can then give the students uh, the opportunity of uh, trying to get the best score possible uh, in GimKit um, by setting them an assignment. Kahoot, which I talked about, I'm sure we all know Kahoot, but did you know that, again, you can create a, an, end, an asynchronous uh, assignment with Kahoot and instruction of how to do that is here. So you can set it as a homework task. So um, if, for example, the students didn't have a good internet connection, um, but they were able to go somewhere where they could get a good internet connection, so not take advantage of their live lesson, but they could then also practice as much as they wanted to um, when they get access to, a, to a, a good internet connection, rather than using, say, their own data, they could um, use uh, Wi-Fi, wherever it might be that they can, they can find that. So that's really nice as well, the way that you can set um, asynchronous assignments. Right, Blue, uh, it. This is another tool which uh, has proved really, really cool for um, engagement. Uh, similar to Kahoot and, and, and quizzes um, and, and GimKit in the way that it's multiple choice, but you can also import um, uh, sets from Quizlet as well, which is which is fantastic. So you can either create the game from scratch or you can import the uh, the, the different sets from Quizlet, either your own sets or someone else's set and it will generate the activity automatically. So there are a number of different activities you can do with BlueKit. Um, and I'm just gonna tell you all about those right now. So you can see you've got things like Santa's Workshop, Gold Quest, Cafe, Racing, Battle Royale, Factory, Crazy Kingdom, Tower of Doom and Classic. And this is from uh, an Italian teacher up in Scotland, uh, Simona, um, whose real name is Simona Graveson, if I remember correctly. And as you can see there, she's saying that Look It is really good for retrieval practice, but in a very sort of fun, engaging, game-like way. So she's using a census builder here, which she is then using as the prompt for the students to then do the activities. Again, some of these can be set as homework, not all of them, but some can be set as homework uh, and some have to be played just live. So we go on to the next one. Here are some of the things you can do with Look It. I'll just give you an opportunity to read that while I sip some water. Um, and feel free to ask me any questions in the chat in a moment if you'd like to. So you can see, for example, uh, there's no login required for the students. That's always lovely to see. It's competitive fun. It's uh, no preparation required apart from importing a Grizzlet set or, or writing your activity from scratch. Promotes retrieval practice, as I've said. You can absolutely just use the free version, but if you do uh, pay the $36 a year, it means you can then group your uh, activities into different folders, which could be useful. But um, the people that I know that have used this, they say you can just use the free version. It's absolutely fine. Um, so that's really, really cool, I think. Another tool which has also proved um, popular is WordWall, which I think is new to everybody. Uh, WordWall, again, it's a free tool, but you get access to... Uh, five different um, exercise types or templates uh, for free but with those templates you can make them as many activities as you want to so I'll just go to the next slide and show you what I oh, before I do that here are some tutorials for word wall um, some of which uh, have been created by the uh, consultant Russell Stannard who's amazing if you have, if you don't know Russell I would really encourage you to check him out he does a, uh, a YouTube, he's got a YouTube channel, which has got many, many, many videos that are proving very popular at the moment and getting thousands and thousands of views. He also has his website, teachertrainingvideos.com as well. But these are just uh, tutorials that I found when I was prepping for another uh, webinar on WordWall. And I put them all there for you uh, to access. And you've got the link there, the links there bottom left of all these different YouTube clips that you can have a look at as well. But uh, here's some examples. I know these are in French, but you get the idea of how this could work. So you've got things like um, gap fills. You've got um, games. This is called whack-a-mole here, bottom left. You've got reordering um, phrases in a sentence. Uh, lots of different, different ideas. You've got matching activities and so on and so forth. So that was shared by an Irish teacher, um, uh, Sarah um, yeah, Isabella Mack from... Um, Tullamore College and uh, yeah you can see the sorts of things that you can do uh, here. I thought this would be useful. This is a screenshot that I took from one of the tutorials I just showed you about the 
uh, activities in WordWall that you can use as an assignment. So an assignment is one whereby it's uh, marked for you automatically, and then you can then access the marks in the grade book within WordWall. So you can't have assignments for every single activity type that's there, but all of these ones do allow you to um, see the marks afterwards, which is pretty cool to say the least, um, to see how the students are getting on as evidence. That's fantastic. Uh, again, here are some features of WordWall. So just to clarify, there are 18 uh, different games that you can um, access using the free version, but then out of those 18 games, you have to choose five of them that you can use. And once you've chosen those five, you can um, edit them as much as you want. You can make as many game activities as you would like to completely for free. Um, but if you want to have access to more than that, then you have to you have to pay. And it's not expensive. I think it's only for like per month. It's about six pounds, I think. And what people some people do or some people recommend is that you pay for one month. You make as many activities as you want to you and stop paying. And uh, the activities that you make are not deleted. They just stay in your account or you can go into the community section, as I've mentioned, sort of halfway down there in the list. And you can uh, uh, use other people's activities that they've made and put them into your own library as well. So lots of ways in which you can do this and you can print off the activities as printable uh, activities as well. So let's say if there's a student who, who doesn't have good Internet connection, at home, you could always make a printable version of the activities as well. So if you do upgrade, you can have access to 34 different types of games um, uh, and no sort of limitations. Um, but with the free version, you get access to 18 games. So what, what I would do is I would sort of go through and, and check out the different um, possibilities and see which ones particularly uh, jump at you that you think will be useful. Um, there we are. So that's WordWall. Now, Duolingo for schools. Uh, Duolingo, of course, has been around for a long, long time. But did we all know that there's a, a school's version of this? Uh, if you didn't, then I would check out this um, AWL London webinar that was done four years ago uh, in 2017 by David Shanks, who's the lead consultant for the Far uh, Harris Federation in London. And he uh, does regular competitions around Duolingo for schools, which is completely free. Um, and uh, is is uh, is very cool. Uh, I know quite a few teachers that like using it uh, for motivating their students and encouraging them to do independent work. So that's fantastic. So if you haven't seen that before, I would check it out, to say the least. Uh, Memorize, likewise, great way of creating your own courses with your own content and then sharing it with the students so, so they can then subscribe to that uh, or they can they can join the class, should I say and they can practice independently. There are lots of other ways you can practice language independently, but Memorize is another option as well for them. Uh, learning apps, which has proved really popular. Uh, it's a completely free tool, which allows you to make sort of multimedia interactive exercises, uh, such as drag and drop and gap fills and so on and so forth. Uh, work very nicely on a mobile device. It doesn't, you don't have to have a big screen. It's fantastic. And you don't need to have a login for the students. You need to have a login for the teacher, but not for the students. And so as evidence to show they've done their work, they could take, say, a screenshot of, um, of their finished activity and then send it to the teacher via Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams or whatever channel that you're using. So that's, uh, that's how that works. And then Julia Morris, uh, who's a language teacher from the southwest of England, she has put together this overview of activities that are available on learningapps.org. So as you can see, you've got things like matching pairs, number lines, simple order, free text input, and so on and so forth. And it's completely free, um, which is pretty awesome to say the least. So I know lots of language teachers um, are, are big fans of learning apps and how you can embed that um, content into other, uh, other places such as Genially, for example. Now, this again is... Esmeralda Salgado on the, uh, the thumbnail there top right. This is a tilt webinar that we did back in January of this year. And um, I think uh, if I remember correctly, Boris Johnson announced the, the uh, new lockdown on the Tuesday. And on the Saturday, we had the first uh, show and tell webinar for tilt uh, organized straight away um, just to give some, uh, some teachers some ideas immediately straight off the bat when we went straight back into the, uh, the new lockdown. And so uh, in this particular webinar, there were four uh, separate presentations, one of which was, was from Esmeralda looking at learning apps, but there were other tools that were mentioned there um, as well, such as Carousel Learning by Jane Bassnet and so on and so forth. So you've got the link there to that video. 
So you can have a look at that in your own time. And then the next slide, we've got the second part, which is the following Saturday, um, which looked at uh, Blookit uh, as well, and then also Spiral.ac, which, we, which we've already, already um, had a look at. So again, um, practicing language to teachers, showing how these different tools work for about 20 minutes each, really, really useful and completely free to access. So there we are. Okay, uh, another video that you might be interested in in relation to quizzing tools is this one. This is from Glenn Cake, who is a distance learning uh, teacher based in Canada, and is a big fan of EdTech and has been for many, many years. And he did a webinar for us as part of the Tilt series called That's Edutainment. And he went through how to use um, WordWall as well as other tools such as GimKit and Kahoot as well. Um, so that was fantastic. And then we also had uh, Kerry Anwen James in May last year as well, who's a deputy, a deputy head teacher in uh, Cardiff at a Welsh speaking school called Uskol Roeden. And um, she's Kerry Anwen on Twitter. And she did again a great presentation on, on different interactive quizzing tools where we all had a go live. Uh, so again, if you watch that back, you can see how it all works. And um, she's also shared her presentation as well. So if you went onto the AWL London website, you'll be able to access all the resources that she shared along with everybody else as well. So that's really awesome. We're very grateful to everybody who shared all their, their different ideas. Okay, another idea uh, for retrieval practice is this one, Wheel of Names. I don't know if this is something which is new to you, if you've seen it before. Uh, so just show you one example. This is just a, a classic way of using um, Wheel of Names as a name picker. So you can see what I've done here is I've added in uh, different names of a certain quartet that you may have heard of and then I click on the circle in the middle it spins the wheel and then one of the names is then picked and it's going to be Paul there we are okay and as you can see we have the sound of the spinning wheel we have the sound of the applause and we have the confetti which you can get rid of if you want to but as you can see Paul has now come up I can then ask Paul to do a, um, a spoken activity or a written activity um, like that. But of course, instead of having names here, you could have sentence starters instead. So it could be, for example, in the future, I, or last weekend, I, and then that will be, again, um, promoting retrieval practice, because whatever comes up um, will allow the students to then either write in the chat, maybe, or say out loud on the microphone, um, an answer to the, the option that comes up. So that's really, really nice as well. Just to give you a flavor of how this works, if I click on create your own, like this this is just the standard uh, wheel that comes up so again I could spin that if I wanted to what I can do is I can just um, delete the content like that and I could just write in any text that I want to so I'm sure you'd be able to write in Arabic here in fact I know you can because I've seen examples of uh, teachers sharing ones when, that have been written in Arabic so that's fantastic but also in addition to this you can also add an image so if I click add image and I find this picture, I don't know, this, let's, sort of look, let's see, find a picture I can use. This one, for example, I can add a picture and there it is. Uh, there, that's a nice, lovely little bit emoji that I've got. Or I could use a website such as AutoDraw, which I'm a big fan of, autodraw.com. And you click start drawing like this. The page comes up like this. I click on the three lines here and I normally choose the square option like that and then I choose the color I want to draw with and I'm going to now draw I'm going to try and draw a cat with a mouse no pun intended okay so I, what I'm doing now is doing that I'm then putting the whiskers in it always looks a bit like a bat but never mind I'm putting the whiskers in and then I'm adding the eyes like that now at the top of the page you can see that um that Google, this is a Google tool, is trying to work out what this is supposed to be. So it thinks it might be a cactus, it might be a rabbit, it might be uh, a pineapple, apparently, it might be a leaf, uh, it might be, you know, you, could, you get the idea. But of course, it's supposed to be a cat. So what you do here is you click on the appropriate image and ta-da, it's become a cat. So I can now make this bigger, like this, like that, to make it fit. I can even fill in the uh, insides if I want to, so I can click here choose uh, say the fill tool choose say yellow and then look i can make it yellow like that so this is a nice way of making uh, images which look very professional like clip art and then you can then download them to your um, device by clicking on the three lines there and clicking download 
then click save that's now downloading and then from there i can go back to wheel of names i can click on the add image option like this and i can find my picture which is there and i can click open and suddenly i have my picture there as well so that's really really simple as a way of adding in the different images that i would like within uh, within this now another idea is to use what's called the emoji keyboard this is a chrome extension which i've shared on the slide that i've just shown you which i'm going to obviously share with you at the end so if i click here on the emoji keyboard and i decide to click on the search option and i put in let's say um television like this so let's put you know, television there we are it's just come up and i can then click on one of them and i click copy i can then paste that in the in the in the chat in the uh in there it's now appeared here i could then uh go back and do another search for this one and i could put in uh let's sort of think i could put in cinema and i could click on say this one let's do that that one that could be cinema oh sorry that wasn't right let's go back i was too keen then wasn't i uh let me click back on here uh oh, actually i could do that let's click, tap to copy Is that right tap, right let me see if that works i've not done this before like that so let me just do that yes that's worked that's great so now you've got the cinema little icon there and then finally if i go back to uh this one again and i put in say swimming this then comes up and i say click on this one click copy uh, go back to wheel of names and I paste it in there. So in other words, what I'm doing here is I'm putting in a selection of three different um, icons. And the idea then would be that whichever one, whichever one comes up, that's a prompt for the students to talk about. For example, uh, I watch TV, I went to the cinema and then I finished uh, by swimming in the evening, for example. So that shows you how easy it is to create the wheel. If you want to customize it, you click customize here. You uh, can get rid of the sound here if you want to. If I click on after spin, I can get rid of the sound again here. I can also get rid of the confetti there and I can change uh, where it says we have a winner. I could write that in Arabic if I wanted to, and that would be simple to do. Having done that, I can also click share, click continue, continue and copy link. I can now share that with you in the chat or obviously I could bookmark that. Um, whatever it is I want to do, or if I have a Google account and click on the save option, I can log in with my Google account or with an email and I can actually save all my wheels to, uh, to my accounts. It's another nice way of doing that. Now, if I go back to here and I show you some other examples, so, um, the, the one here, that's the, uh, emoji keyboard option. As you can see, I've got different, uh, emojis there, uh, which I then spin and ask the students to then come up with a sentence or say out loud. A sentence describing the the three items to the right of that i've used auto draw for them to select something simple like uh, a pet let's say they could then talk about the color of the pet or the age of the pet um and what they do with the pet and so on and so forth and the last one is just um using bitmoji characters um and you spin the wheel and it chooses an activity um, which you can then do using a particular uh, tool and you've got the links to all these examples here including the emoji keyboard extension, which is there, which you can then download and install. Let's carry on. Uh, tab resize is a Chrome extension, which allows you to split the screen into two, three, four windows. You could have wheel of names running, say four times, you spin each wheel and it will then come up with a random sentence. That's also uh, really cool. So when you share the wheels, who can control it? So if you're sharing the wheel via Zoom, then obviously you're in complete control. If you share the link with the students, then they're in control of, of spinning the wheels, if that makes sense. Um, so once you share the link with them, it's just a link, they can then spin the wheel as much as they want to. So you could, for example, uh, describe the activity, share the links with the students, and then they can all work in say pairs or individually to generate um, multiple uh, answers using the wheel, if that makes sense. So that's called tab resize and it allows you to split the uh, the windows into different sections, which is really, really cool. Uh, this is an example of two language teachers using Wheel of Names. So Karine here from the International School of Monaco is using it for verb 
uh, verbs, tenses, making sentences, you name it, it does it. Uh, Jane Bassett, I've mentioned already, has in, uh, integrated uh, Wheel of Names within OneNote, which is which is fantastic as well for those Microsoft users. Uh, and again, you could contact these two people and ask them in more detail about how they're actually using the tool. This is Esmeralda Salgado, who's um, combined Wheel of Names with a website called Classroom Screen, which I'd really encourage you to have a look at, classroomscreen.com. Uh, and that allows you to organize your resources using different tools like um, Name Picker. Uh, in fact, let me just let me just show you. It's going to be easy if I just show you. If I click um, uh, here like that and I click uh, Share, Continue, Continue and Copy, I go to a new page. I go to classroomscreen.com like this. Uh, and then for free, you click launch now, no account needed, as you can see, launch now. It comes up like this. Um, you can just choose your own background. As you can see there, it says Great Wall of China, but I could click uh, background and I can choose one of these or I can upload my own image if I wanted to. So if I fancy going for, I don't know, uh, this one, that's cool. And then if I wanted to, I could click on the random name option, which means this, this thing comes up. I could then write Paul... George, John, Ringo, and click choose. It will then choose randomly uh, one of these um, people here. And I can also click on the media option and I can click embed like that. And I can then post in the link like that and click open website. So what that will do is it will generate, as you can see there, can you see? I can now have say the wheel there and I could then have the uh, the name here. So I could click, okay, click there to choose, spin the wheel. And then I could say, all right, Paul, I want you to talk all about D, F, G, D, G, F, D, F, G, <laughs> for example. You get the idea. So um, that's how that works. And then with a the classroom screen, uh, you've got other things such as, let me just get rid of that now. You've got other things such as um, sound level. So if the students are, that's fine. If the students are speaking too loudly, you can see that the sound level is going to go up. You can use the draw function like this. You can then draw a picture. So again, for Arabic, you could use that for forming characters. Um, you've got the text option, which is self-explanatory. So you can just write your text in there and you, you get the idea. There's lots of different tools there. You've got a stopwatch like that. So it's a really nice way of organizing your, your lessons, uh, particularly in a remote teaching context. There we are. That's how that works. Okay. So that's classroom screen. Now I've only got a few minutes to go, so I will quickly wrap up quite soon. Uh, if you're a PowerPoint fan, this is a template you can download from uh, technologic.wordpress.com called the spinning wheel. So again, you can add in your text and your images into that. So that's the, the same type of thing. And there are other templates you can use as well um, uh, from that website. So Google Form examples, I'll just very quickly give you a flavor of this. If you're a fan of Google Forms, then um, this is a Google Form I've put together um, aimed at language teachers. So as you can see, you've got uh, multiple choice activities, other multiple choice ones, and I've given step-by-step -step guides on how to create this activity. And I'm going to share the whole form with you so you can then just replicate it and um, uh, make as many copies as you want. So there's lots of different ways in which you can uh, use Google Forms, maybe in ways that you haven't thought about before. Um, so that's that for you there. And uh, you should find that really useful. In the next one, we've got uh, an example. So this is a Spanish teacher who has used uh, my uh, template and has um, uh, customized it. So put in an image as a sentence builder. Uh, created multiple choice activity using images and made a narrow reading activity uh, whereby the, um, the students have to put in the slight differences between each text. That's the idea here in the short answer option there. So that's really cool. This is a video clip talking about how you can grade short answer responses in Google Forms, um, which is um, very useful. Um, so I do encourage you to have a look at that one as well. Uh, if you're using Microsoft tools, this is again from Jane Bassnett's blog on how to use Microsoft Forms and Microsoft Quizzes. Uh, this is a video clip from Gloria Enrique, who's a language teacher based in Ireland, 
who's a, a native Spanish speaker. And this is a video describing how you can insert audio into Microsoft Form to create a listening comprehension activity, which is very useful, obviously. Uh, you've also got the Tilt webinar that Gloria did for us as well, which is an hour long looking at how you can use Microsoft Forms, which I would really recommend if you're using uh, Microsoft Tools, and she's a great person to follow. Uh, this is again from Esmeralda Salgado. She's also created a little video clip here using an app called PhotoSpeak, um, which is um, iOS only, but a great way of being able to turn your Bitmoji character into a speaking character. There's also Chatterpix Kid, which I'll just write in the chat for you, which is iOS and Android. And you've also got one called iFunFace, which also allows you to make a talking uh, avatar. So what um, Esmeralda does is she makes her uh, avatar speak using that app she then uploads the video into youtube makes it unlisted and puts the unlisted video into her microsoft quiz for um this comprehension and she's written a blog post here describing exactly how she puts it together this is again a blog post from esmeralda uh, around retrieval practice and some suggestions on tools which are particularly useful uh, to promote retrieval practice and embed it in your language lessons uh, and just to sort of finish off with in relation to authenticity, which I thought was a good thing to, to talk about in academic honesty, just going to give you some ideas around um, Google Translate. So here's um, one suggestion. There's a, a tool called exam.net that was free last year, but it's no longer free, unfortunately, um, but certainly something to consider. And it sort of monitors your keyboard. It will tell you whether you've had your hands off the keyboard for a certain amount of time. You can use it for summative assessments. You can upload a PDF an mp3 file as a way of um uh, of creating your assessment and then you can then force submit the answers um uh, after say an hour or what have you you've also got um francois stolder here who's a, a teacher from the Inter american international school of um budapest and he gets the children to point their webcams at their hands or they're doing a, uh, their assignment on a piece of paper he then uses office lens which is a microsoft tool to take pictures of those bits of paper and turn it into one PDF and then upload it onto uh, Google Classroom, or you could obviously put it onto Microsoft Teams as well. Um, and then you've also got the draft back and DocuViz um, Chrome extensions, which allow you to monitor to see whether there have been big chunks of text added into your Google Doc, for example. Uh, this is um, Office Lens again. So just uh, talking about how you can upload images um, as PDFs very easily to Microsoft Teams. So that just gives you some e extra Links to have a look at, and oh, sorry, I've repeated that um, in twice. And here is just some ideas on on ways of discouraging the children from using Google Translate. My favourite one is from Vincent Everett again, which is to put in uh, different uh, signal words, which have got nothing to do with the text. For example, I don't know, like a word like penguin, for example, but have them very small and the same colour as the background. So if a child has tr translated the text, it will obviously appear, and you'll be able to see whether they've cheated or not. So that's a nice idea as well that was uh, shared recently this is again another blog post from Esmeralda on um, uh, 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 minimizing and controlling the use of Google Translate which again I think you should find useful which is also always important to talk about in relation to um, uh, using uh, quizzes in retrieval practice again that's from Vincent talking about um, his ideas on um, uh, using the slipping tool to take an image of some text so, it's, so it makes it harder for the students to use Google Translate and just a thought, uh, hopefully you found this session useful. If you would like to recommend me to um, anybody else who might be interested in booking me for a webinar, here's um, 18 example sessions that I can offer and I can design a bespoke session for anyone who's interested. And there we are, we've done it. Just bang on time. There we are, half past uh, five. So I just put this in the chat for you as well. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash is dot gd uh, forward slash B, C, Q, F, I, and then my name. There we are. And I would just like to hand back to uh, Tony and uh, let Tony wrap up. But thanks ever so much, everyone, for the feedback. And I hope, really hope you found that useful. Over to you, Tony.